Sure. Um, do you know anything about what the, the facilities that they're going to turn on the water and the bathrooms and all that stuff? So the water should go on this summer. Uh, we were at St. Catharines Park also has a PV project, so if folks are interested, they, they've lost every single year, they don't have that have of a PTA. It's interesting, participatory budgeting in different parts of the city has one group or another that always wins. So in Astoria, the libraries always win, uh, and uh, the parks sometimes win. Uh, here, it's the PTAs that win every time. So if this PTA were to prioritize St. Catharines Park, I'm sure it could win. Uh, what happened is we worked with the Conservancy for St. Catharines Park, the Friends of, and they wanted a new spray shower. But what they ended up figuring out is that the spray shower worked. It was just that people were stuffing things in the elephant's nose. So they pulled the stuff out of the nose and uh, I see a bunch of these spots. Maybe that's too. Don't worry. I can't explain it. I don't know why. So they're, they're, they're pulling stuff out of Dumbo's nose so that he can spray. He or she can spray water on all the kids. But so that should be working. and. Uh, if you just touch base with our office, we'll work with you until we get an answer from Parks Department. So I have another one. But yeah, I, sure. I, so we have a problem with the NYC social on Wednesdays and, and Thursday nights that I already called your office a couple of times, and I also called the police department, and I also spoke to Wesley at the New York Parks Department, where um, these people are actually yelling at our kids and kicking us out, closing the gate, and putting a chain lock on it, which is illegal because they say that they have a permit which they can't prove. What is the NYC social? The kickball league. And they don't, they do or yeah, don't Yeah, and have a we, have, uh, we have a couple of parents in the school, uh, probably not here, but are very scared to bring their kids to the park at that time because the thing is, they, these adults are drunk coming from Old Flanagan and they're playing kickball and they're yelling at us to get off and stuff like that. Uh, Josh, if you can write this down, and so what time? Six, starting at six o'clock on Wednesdays and Thursdays, and it, they they started posting um, paper because when I called and complained, I was like, you know, you had a kid, you had a guy yell at my child, telling him to get the fuck out of here, like five times the whole entire time, and then I didn't get there till later, and and then I went, they were telling me, and then um, I went up to the guy, and he goes, no, I never talked to them, I never, never talked to them. Okay. And it's O'Flanagan's is the bar? No, no, no. NY, NYC but what's Social. What's the name of the bar that they're coming from? They're coming, but you'll see them on like, if you go, if you walk by on like Wednesday or Thursday around 6 o'clock, okay. they wear these same matching t-shirts and then all of a sudden they will walk by, by, by walk, walk by there. Okay. So I, I'm on my way to the 19th precinct after this. Uh, <laughs> so I'll, 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 I'll mention it's the commanding officer of the 19th precinct and ask if they can uh, have somebody out from 6 to 7 at the park today and if they see the folks come up and uh, lock it, either do a, a low level intervention of like, you know, you can't do that or a higher level intervention depending They on also the ask us to play on the other side. So you're talking about kids in our neighborhood that usually play after school, like around 6, 7 o'clock, and then it's like you're talking about from Wagner, from here, yep. and stuff like that. And they all playing basketball, they're telling us, oh, you can't play on, you can't play on this basketball court, you can't okay. play on this basketball court. So I'll mention it to the commanding officer, will double check with the Parks Department and also say it is not appropriate to issue a permit for this location, even if they do or don't. And uh, we'll work with you, we just need you to be our eyes and ears. So if, if, if you or somebody here is willing to make Wednesday 6 o'clock a, a permanent appointment if you'll stop by, take a look, and let us know, because the way it works is we will mention it to the 19th, they will say that they're going to send somebody, and then we don't have the capacity to double check whether it happens, the only way we'll know is if you tell us, you are my eyes and ears in the community, but this seems something very straightforward like we should be able to do. We may also reach out to the bar and say, listen, your patrons are doing something organized from you, we can also reach out to NYC Social and say, like, what's happening is it's appropriate, and we can work with you on that. And anything else? So, did anyone read the Our Town article about this, or? So, I, I got elected in 20... 13 and in 2014 I was in office and I was really nervous about this this whole situation of like 
you live in a brown zone, you're rent regulated, and then your landlord puts a cell phone antenna on top of your building. And you're like, that's weird, I don't necessarily want an antenna right on top of where I sleep at night, I don't think this is a good idea. And so I actually looked at whatever or not I could legislate it. And so that spent about 16 hours of legal research uh, going through federal cases, state cases, FCC regulations, and, and you name it. And so the quick answer is uh, that you've got federalism, so you've got the federal government, the state government, the municipal government. The municipal government only has the power that is left over after the federal and the state uh, act or don't act. And uh, the long story short is if you don't have zoning regulations, put cell phone towers everywhere. Uh, when Bloomberg was mayor, he actually take, took a concerted effort and he added a situation where he's right now, if you dial 311 and you say, I have no service in the PS 183 cafeteria, they will actually send somebody here to figure out how to get cell service in here. Because Bloomberg had, I got it, I'm just telling you, that that is a program that Bloomberg set up. So as a result, we have a situation where folks put cell phone towers pretty much anywhere. Uh, in terms of the cell phone tower technology you're, you're dealing with, so they have the, the white panels that you see on the tops of buildings. And uh, what they found is that those towers can't handle all the traffic people are generating. So now they're starting a new company spring up to create a, a micro-infrastructure for the people on the sidewalks walking around the streets to handle the additional load that happens during rush hour and things like that. So they are, I believe, lower frequency, but I, I share your concerns. I just don't actually have the power to do anything. It is a federal issue, and it is an FCC issue. Uh, all the fights on this were fought in the 80s and 90s when the cell phone tower was proliferating, and people just didn't want them anymore. So I, I wish I had better news for you. I can say that they are, they are, they are expanding all over the city, and in fact, in some of the communities I represent, folks are actually trying to get more because their cell phone reception is still spot. So, I know it's not the answer you wanted, but it's the honest answer. And the FCC is not the most responsive agency right now, because otherwise we'd still have net neutrality. Right on. <laughs> um, well, actually, point of interesting fact for the person who said right on, New York City and New York State will still have net neutrality until 2020. Fair enough. I, I guess I'm just as crazy, but uh, so as part of the spectrum purchase of Time Warner Cable, I negotiated that they had to agree to uh, net neutrality, and at the time they were like, well, it's already acquired by the FCC, so sure, we'll give it to you. And then the FCC changed, and then they, they were very angry that they had to give that up. Sure. And, yeah. Do you have some about the extended PKC to your federal data centers and your own Yes. Smart. Uh, so, and um, my new street, we're opening, I believe, 180 seats in September. The building has just finished. We're working with Derek Garnett from Exto. Uh, some of you may have heard that I, I, I have it in for real estate. Uh, if you don't put up a 1,000 foot tower in my neighborhood, I'm kind of okay with you. Uh, so, Gary Garnett put a building that was within context of the neighborhood. So, we have that at 76th Street, we're converting a garage into a huge pre-K center that should bring another 200 seats. And uh, so that should bring us up from about 500 to 600 at our peak up to 900. With that being said, I'm still fighting for more pre-K seats. Also, uh, I'm arguing with the mayor if he wants to do pre-K by 2026. I, I have a three-month-old, so I told the mayor, if you don't get me pre-K in my district, it's going to cost me $30,000. And uh, I need it now, so you're working on getting a free k sooner than later. So if you know of any space, we're looking for 10,000 square feet or more. If you know any new developments coming in, if you know any buildings being assembled, if you let us know, I will go over to the developer and I will beg, plead, steal, whatever it takes to, not necessarily steal, <laughs> uh, but I, I will do whatever it takes within the bounds of the law to the developer and uh, happy to work with you on it. Things 
So that, that is a, a fair question, and so I think you and I may be in the minority of people who haven't given up yet. Uh, the mayor may wish to open it, but I, I do not believe you can drive garbage trucks through a residential neighborhood at maybe six or seven schools without there being a conflict. And I've said this to the mayor, and I've said if anything happens, the blood is on his hands, and he will have been on notice, and the city will be exposed to liability that the city has not seen before. Uh, so. Uh, we've gotten some changes. Uh, they're limiting the number of trucks. I think we're down from what I think Pledge of Protection said around 500 trucks a day down to 38 to 40. Uh, so we are going to get less than what our folks expected. Uh, and just so you know, we already get 38. We used to get, and we all live in this neighborhood, we used to have a garbage. Uh, garage on 74th Street, and that used to have 200 trucks. We used to see 400 trips a day in 2007, uh, or sorry, 2012, I'm not sure when it closed down, but we used to see 200 trucks a day in this neighborhood, and now we're going from 200 trucks a day to 40. And half those trips are coming from East Harlem, so most of those trucks aren't going to be through the neighborhood, but that being said, I'd like to try to close it. Uh, there's not much of a movement for it now, but I'm still trying to Thank you. Wow. Last call. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, something you should know. Uh, who here lives in a co-op or condo? Okay, I do something called bed in your building. I will show up at your co-op or condo annual meeting uh, to talk to you about whatever you like. Uh, I grew up in a co-op and now live in a condo, and the, it's one of those things where it's the only time you see your neighbors. So I'm happy to make the, uh, the house calls and work with you on whatever the issue on your block is. Uh, we also do First Friday. Uh, we'll be doing one, I believe, on June 1st at 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. You're welcome to come by. The kids are welcome to come by. Uh, we also do work with kids. So uh, we work with Eastside Middle School. We work with PS290 on legislation. Uh, Eastside Middle School actually passed their legislation into law. It was on gender sexuality alliances. Those kids talk about things that they Wherever you think they are, those kids are already there. Uh, and then at PS290, uh, we're working on banning pesticides for parks. So whether it's partnering with PS290 on that effort or another effort, if you have an idea for legislation and your kids do, we're happy to work with you on that. And uh, I hope to see folks at uh, graduation. So yeah, thank you.